a video about a field effect transistor radio oscillator that has to generate sine wave frequencies. And here is the test circuit on a breadboard made with brass nails, etc. etc. Like I do that always. And here is a test coil connected to the oscillator and I will show the schematic. Here is another test coil that can be connected to the oscillator, the field effect transistor oscillator and I don't show, say, the parallel capacitor that can change the frequency in a quite good and big way. Uh, I don't um, uh, say demonstrate that tuning effect because I only wanted to focus on coils. Their proper functioning, how they have to be made, etc. etc. And when we are talking about how they how they how they have to be made, this is this is a good idea. Say it's a toilet roll varnished properly and it was varnished by uh, glue that's normally used for sewage pipes and the smell is acetone and here we have done I have done exactly the same the cardboard tube it's a toilet roll and it is wound up with say this type of wire and then that wire has a diameter of approximately one millimeter and the insulation is here uh, that ins insulation also gives that coil a very high quality factor because the uh, separate windings are spaced by means of that insulation and when that insulation is lacquered with a kind of shellac like I do uh, uh, there's more uh, say better much better uh, insulation properties that make such a coil ideal and then especially here for shortwave and for say approximately two mega cycles up to approximately five mega cycles and you can use that tuning capacitor I didn't do that anyway uh, I only wanted to give say kind of good idea about how to make such a circuit how to make such an uh, one transistor, one field effect transistor oscillator. So this cap tuning capacitor is not there in this demo. But furthermore everything is there. Uh, 47 ohm uh, resistor here, 470 ohm uh, resistor. That's always good when you use a field effect resistor on 12 volts. And here we take out the signal out of the source. Via a small capacitor, here it is 33 picofarad. You can also use a higher value, 100 picofarad, 400 picofarad, etc. etc. But of course, there's a kind of damping on the output of the oscillator. So here is that the used transistor. It's not obsolete by the way. The BF256A is not obsolete. You see a waveform. Well, is this a good sine wave? Well, no, not at all. Or say in a certain way, okay, 
uh, you can change that waveform to a more proper sine wave. When you limit the voltage to the oscillator, now it is on 633 kilo cycles. And that has everything to do with this big coil here. 633 kilo cycles, big coil here. And say, when I shortcut the coil, say, when I make uh, not so much windings here, by adding the crocodile clip, take some time, of course. Well, here I have, I don't have the complete coil here. I now have, say, a shortened coil. That means that we see that we are now on 841 kilocycles. Waveform still not a perfect sine wave, but anyway. Let's try to get to, to a somewhat higher frequency. I have to move the crocodile clip. So now it is on this part of the winding. And this part of the winding means that the oscillator here works on a much higher frequency. And like I told, I have not used here a tuning capacitor. I only wanted to point out that you can use such a circuit as a properly working sine wave oscillator for short wave uh, applications anyway. So let's look. Now we are 1.2 megahertz. We have now quite a good sine wave and that, that is say uh, a kind of normal effect when you go to higher frequencies and when you have done oscillator uh, experiments in the past or now and when you will do oscillator experiments you will surely see that the waveform gets more pure when you go to higher frequencies anyway. So I put down the camera for a while and want to show an other shortwave coil, how it works and is affected and etc. etc. So this is the other coil. Uh, toilet roll, well varnished and thick wires here. The, uh, the wire, the internal wire is approximately one millimeter and the isolation material makes that uh, that coil looks like a two millimeter winding but anyway uh, that has a very very good effect on the quality factor that's very important to tell uh, because now all these windings here are spaced in a very good way with a high quality isolation material that is a certain type of plastic uh, we have a coil that has a very high Q quality factor connected to this very very simple oscillator circuit with a field effect transistor this is that schematic again You can see that at first we are on 3.09 megahertz. We have a quite good waveform. Though there is some, say, here there is a kind of problem, but anyway, good enough for a radio or for a VFO uh, variable frequency oscillator, etc. etc. And when you uh, do some experiments, further experiments, especially say with these two capacitors here, one nanofarad, 150 picofarad, you can get say a 
perhaps a better waveform without these say kind of blubbers inside of that waveform. And also when you do some experiments with this uh, coil in the source lead, say change it to 700 microfarad or so. In that case perhaps you can get a better waveform. Anyway, uh, well, we are now with this coil on 3.0 megahertz. Let's try to get to an, a higher frequency. Of course in that case there must be a, uh, less inductance. So here the crocodile clip is connected. And we are now on 4.8 megahertz. Also with this say strange bubble inside of the waveform. And well, let's go to the highest frequency perhaps that we can get. And I'm absolutely not sure that it will be successful. So we have here four windings on this toilet roll, well varnished toilet roll. And now we are on 8.9 megahertz. Well, and a very good waveform. Very, very proper sine wave. So, anyway, uh, you can do many, many experiments with this circuit. Uh, perhaps you can use it as a, or not perhaps, surely you can use it as a VFO variable frequency oscillator. When you use, of course, such a tuning capacitor, uh, you can also use here two anti-parallel diodes, the 1N uh, diode family, and then send in a certain voltage to these anti-parallel diodes. And because of the fact that they have a a varying capacitance on their barrier layer, you can tune in to certain frequencies, but uh, be aware of the fact that uh, that um, capacitance generated by the anti-parallel diodes is only in the say 5 picofarad up to approximately 30 picofarad range. That will work on high frequencies, say VHF, but surely not on medium waves, uh, say up to approximately uh, 12 megahertz, but you can surely use this that ID as a fine tuning. Anyway, Thanks for watching. I hope it was a little bit interesting and clear. There are more videos about this on my YouTube channel. Uh, go to the looking glass on my um, YouTube channel trailer and then look and uh, search with keywords like uh, oscillator, generator, shortwave etc etc thanks for watching